Hello and welcome to a video about hair photography. Hairs have been the sole focus of my photography efforts recently and I feel I've got to the stage where I've got a fair few stories and I've got some photos that I feel are ready to share with you guys and so yeah I thought it was time to put together a vlog. The way I thought I was going to do this is rather than me just waffle on about hairs and how much I love them. Um, I thought it would be better to have a theme. So the theme I've chosen for today is how to get close to hairs and by this I mean this is beyond the stage of finding a hair location. So once you've got a location where you've seen hairs before and you can realistically trust that you're going to see hairs again. What decisions do you make that help you to get nice and close to a hair so that you can get a really nice close-up shot of a hair? So the first kind of thing I was going to, to mention with this is I have a location that I know really well, that I go to quite a lot and I know where the hairs come out. And at this location, what I'll actually do is I will creep up on the spot. Basically, there's no way to get to the spot without being seen, you know, there's, there's no cover at all. Um, so I will be creeping up, not knowing if a hair's going to come out or not. Um, so that does require quite a lot of patience and belief, but that's actually worked really well for me in the past. Um, by creeping up, what I mean is I'm, I'm wearing camouflage, I'm essentially shuffling on my knees and I'm very aware of not making noise, I'm very aware of like not moving my arms suddenly and just keeping everything calm and quiet and pausing regularly as well and just sitting with the camera ready and seeing if a hair is going to come out. And yeah. This is, as I say, works quite well for me. I, I would actually say that my favourite photos that I've taken have been at this particular location. And the only way I would have got to that spot is by creeping up really slowly. I would, I would recommend that as a technique. Although, I would say, um, massive disadvantage is if you do it repeatedly and you don't see a hair, um, that can be really, <laughs> really disheartening so you can put a lot of effort in a lot of time to get to a spot and then not see anything and just feel like you've wasted half an hour of your life but anyway um, so the other main technique that I will do is to just walk around kind of again calmly quietly wearing camouflage and always looking ahead of me and being aware of any brown blobs that could be hairs and as soon as I see a hair then going into full stealth mode and trying to get as close as possible um, so I quite often have the the decision making of do I then creep up in the, the long grass which is great at um, completely obscuring your outline so you can genuinely creep up quite close um, to hairs with this but then you're behind long grass and that can be really annoying in terms of trying to get a nice photo I mean that's that's very much location specific as well like some locations you have no choice um, you don't have any other vegetation to hide behind but yeah that's always a decision making process of mine and I should also say that when I'm creeping up, I'm always, always trying to read the body language of the hairs. So I'm always looking down the camera um, through the telephoto lens and just observing them. You know, if they are resting and they're not on the high alert, that's a really good time to try and creep forward. Um, but if they're, you know, all alert and ears up, then that can be a time just to wait. It's also a really good time to wait when they're actively moving around 
because if you don't move at all then they can actually just move straight towards you and they've done half the job of creeping up anyway so yeah um i really love that when hairs just act actively run towards you um that can really be a sign that you're not scaring the wildlife so i really like that and that's an important thing to say about not scaring the wildlife um i mean this definitely definitely from the ethical point of view of genuinely not wanting to scare the hares I mean, also from a selfish point of view like if I have a location that I like I'm going to go back there again and again and again so I don't want them to be scared of me at all I don't want to jeopardize any future trips there I want it that if they see me they see me as this blob of camouflage that moves very slowly and isn't a threat at all and occasionally will make the sound of a shutter. You know, that's that's what I want them to think of me as. I don't want them to think of me as a, a blob of camo that will creep up on them and then will suddenly stand up and walk away at full speed and reveal that I am actually much taller than than they thought I was. So yeah, that was um, just some thoughts on getting close to hares. Um, as always, I'd love to engage with you in the comments section below and thank you for watching.